before we get into this week's episode of Cover Killer Nation's favorite albums, and I'll be making this announcement on some other videos as well, I just want to announce that April the 26th to May the 2nd, that's next week, ladies and gentlemen, is Fan Appreciation Week, which means that aside from the typical album reviews, that means you guys will be making the call as to what this channel will be offering, what videos will be done, album reviews, top 10 lists. You guys will ch uh, choose the theme for Cover Killer Nation's favorite albums and 10 awesome songs. So go over to the Facebook page. There's a link in the description box as to how you can get there and become a member of the Facebook page. Leave your suggestions for Fan Appreciation Week next week. And who knows, your video may be one of them that is featured next week right here on this channel. But for now, on with the show, hit my intro. Last couple weeks on Cover Killer Nation's favorite albums, we've been speaking about individuals of influence or bands of influence and some of the groups that they've either inspired or been a part of. But now let's do that with a movement. Let's talk about four different slabs, four different styles, four different types of one of the heavy metal subgenres that is pretty populated these days. Let's talk about death metal. We're going to talk about four different varieties, and so we're going to be talking about an influential album from each of these four subgenres of death metal, including just the genre itself. So let's get started. <music> to start this off, we have to look at the basics. We need to look at the very invention, the very evolution of the genre of death metal in and of itself. We could talk about influential names such as Morbid Angel or Cannibal Corpse, or we could just go back to one of the forefathers of the subgenre in general with Chuck Schuldiner and Death. But we actually want to talk about something a little bit different from the Florida death metal scene whenever it comes to this. We want to talk about one that was so successful that it's considered one of the best-selling albums of the genre by itself, and that's the end complete from Obituary. This is a band where obviously their style was very one-of-a-kind, not in the fact of its death metal stylings. That was pretty par for what death metal was all about. But the delivery, the vocals, the way in which this gruff caveman style variety really started to take off. This is really a one-of-a-kind band, a, a whale that definitely seems to really carry from just the primitive times of man and is able to exude from the lungs uh, in order to really captivate a message. This is one that feels absolutely destructive and is highly influential. What a fantastic album from these individuals. It's definitely on part uh, for albums such as Eaten Back to Life by Cannibal Corpse, either that or Individual Thought Patterns by Death. It may not be as technical, it may be a little bit more simplistic, a little bit more what may, people may consider these days as run-of-the-mill, but god damn is it not crushing and brutal and everything that made early death metal just a tasty motherfucking discovery. As death metal evolved, bands looked to see how they could use the genre and combine it with other elements in order to craft something brand new and completely different. And probably one of the best examples of this is the album Focus by Cynic. This is a band that was able to combine two things that you never really would expect to work perfectly in hand-in-hand -hand harmony, which is death metal and the idea of jazz. Yeah, it's actually what you would more so consider this. This is one that certainly showcases what jazz, death metal, or blackened jazz could kind of accomplish. Either that or just kind of a brand new, different philosophy to the whole aspect of death metal. And it gives a lot of inspiration and has been highly influential to many bands that you hear about today. Think about every band that is throwing some sort of strange progression, either that or some strange little new wrench onto the death metal palette. Cynic is one of the bands along with a group, uh, a group called Atheist in order to really uh, throw this into the forefront and showcase that death metal didn't have to just be a genre that was populated by one single solitary idea, much like how thrash metal could easily be separated by bands that were more influenced in thrash and melody and those that were in, uh, interested primarily in just how quick they could play. Of course, we would see other evolutions as the 1990s would carry on, but 
Focus is an album that's actually lived through time. This is one that's more than 20 years old and still stands tall as probably one of the most influential, not to mention one of the best albums of all time. This is a solid one just from front to back. Its uniqueness really carries it and really is the backbone to why it's such a wildly fantastic and just groundbreaking album. It showcases that with a little bit of ingenuity that you're able to influence uh, one genre of music with another, and there is a way in which it will always, always somehow work. Originally, the term melodic death metal was not one that was thrown around as often as it is today. Instead, it was one that was focused more so on the Gothenburg music scene. And this included bands such as Dark Tranquility, At The Gates, or In Flames, which is who we're going to talk about. Traditionally on this channel, we've talked about In Flames in kind of a negative light because of their recent outputs, but an album such as Horacle really showcases what melodic death metal really had to offer. Now, many of you probably would say, why not, you know, Lunar Strain or, you know, Black Ash Inheritance? Why not the Jester Race? Why Horacle? It's the one that actually speaks to me the most. This is one that's consistent, but at the same time showcases the ability of this group in order to morph the melodic death metal sound into one that was going to become a little bit more accessible. This is actually one of the first signs that a band like In Flames could easily kind of break through and become a very marketable band, but not to mention also a very accessible band for a lot of individuals individuals that were perhaps looking at metal as a genre that may seem a bit difficult to get into. This has really, really great melody, but at the same time it does not, does not, does not sacrifice speed, does not sacrifice brutality in order to really try to showcase a different side of themselves. Uh, so I think of songs such as, uh, oh, I don't know, just your script transcribed as true, magnificent portions of the uh, In Flames discography, and this is just one of the most solid albums that the band has really output, probably to date. Uh, you could easily speak about some of the earliest works of Dark Tranquility in this same breath. You could probably include Slaughter of the Soul from At the Gate. Some people may even be so tempted as to throw Carcass's last album, Swan Song, into this same variety, stating that they aided the course for melodic death metal as well. But I look at Horacle, and it's an album that I can pick up just about every single day and enjoy from front to back. It's a shame that I can't say that about In Flames' most recent output. There are so many offshoots of death metal that we could talk about with our final place on this list, and we could easily do this again, and perhaps we will. We could easily talk about blackened death metal, either that, or talk about the various other uh, incarnations that have come in the 2000s with things such as deathcore. But I want to speak about brutal death metal, or gore metal, or, or really whatever you want to call whatever some of these groups are. All the names and all of the different uh, you know, parlances are kind of irrelevant in the fact that it's one that really showcases a bit of a really, really depraved side. One that really struck me whenever it first came out was in 2003, 12 years ago, and that was Gormageddon, The Saw and the Carnage Done, by a band that you probably know named Aborted. This was their third output, and it was certainly one that really elevated them to the next level. This is the group that really, before this, had a core following, but Gormageddon really sent that fan base through the roof. The titular song, The Saw and the Carnage Done, just really showcased all of the different essences of uh, this style of music, just how brutal and just how much of an aural assault that it could really be. And really, albums like this are extremely influential whenever you couple them with some of the other names that have either uh, come alongside the group, but at the same time have come afterward. Think of how the aural assault of a, of a band such as Anal Nakrath really sounds, and then take a listen to Gormageddon, The Saw and the Carnage Done, and realize that it's just an, it's another step in the evolutionary process of sound. This album just has big, brutal ideas and really showcases it in the way it slays through its entirety. And not to mention, it also has a nice little tribute to one of the bands that really showcased gore probably the best in the grindcore or grind gore department. Uh, they do a cover of Carnal Forge by Carcass and... Damn, we could talk about covers in a 10 awesome songs list, and this would probably be one that I would have to throw on it. Just a damn good cover of this track. One that definitely holds up to the original. If you're looking for something that's you've never heard before, that definitely has an edge to it, and definitely sounds like a buzzsaw coming straight at your skull, then this is an album to check out. 
Well, there you have it. Four influential slabs of death metal that definitely have changed and paved the way for a lot of the groups of today. And there are groups of today that are paving the way for the groups of tomorrow. If you want to talk about those groups of tomorrow with me, then you definitely want to subscribe and get on board. Definitely like and comment on this video. And like I said at the forefront, don't forget to go over to the Facebook group, give it a like, and give your ideas, give your concepts, give your thoughts about next week's impending Fan Appreciation Week. I am Cover Killer Nation, and I will see you guys next time whenever we explore more of Cover Killer Nation's favorite albums.